presented by Caltech. At Caltech, we write for so many reasons. We write to propose new work. We write to reach out to collaborators and work together with them. We write to share our knowledge with the world. We write to teach, we write to learn, and we write to discover. Caltech turns out to be a wonderful place to study engineering, math, physics, chemistry, biology, all the reasons you're coming to Caltech. You know you're gonna come here and do a lot of math proofs, do a lot of labs, do a lot of calculations. But the thing you may not know is that you're also gonna write a lot of papers. And this is a good thing. You might think that this doesn't have much to do with your success as a scientist, but what I can tell you is it has everything to do with your success as a scientist. We're writing all the time as scientists. Um, and the better you can write, more concisely you can present your ideas, the more compelling you can be, the more persuasive you can be, the better off you are as a scientist. Good writing and good communication are important in any field. In science and engineering, we have a number of audiences that we have to communicate with in order to succeed. And those audiences include our funding agencies or donors or employers, as well as our collaborators, and co-authors, as well as our students and fellow scientists and the public. A good scientist or engineer or professional in any field has to communicate with those audiences. And the more pleasant it is to read your writing, and the more pleasant it is to listen to your presentations, and the more they make sense, the more successful you'll be with all of those audiences. Being able to effectively communicate um, is something that anybody needs in any profession. It's kind of like a life skill. and it. I would like stress that it doesn't just apply to the sciences. Um, it's just really important to be able to communicate very well in real life. Writing is actually extremely essential to our success at Caltech. Um, a professor once told me that science not communicated is science not done. One should think of writing as an act of discovery. When you are looking at data, there is no better way than to think of what it means and what its implications are except through the writing process. I bother my students all the time in terms of firing questions at them which arise because through the writing process I've come across an aspect of the data, a concept that is somehow born into high relief because of being able to write about it. So I recommend to you the writing process not only as a way to get your ideas out to the public, but as a way to think deeply about what your data means, about the directions you're going, and that the science you can accomplish. When I think of academic writing, I think of all the kinds of writing that happen on this campus every day that have to do with teaching, learning, discovery, and sharing knowledge. I just been in the last week, I wrote a National Science Foundation proposal, a draft of a research paper, reviews of three different research papers sent to me by various journals, emails to several dozen collaborators and students. I wrote a lecture. I write, you know, every day, several things, um, some of them just a few words, some of them many pages. I never go more than a day without having to write something. Well, first of all, I'm writing emails all the time. Second of all, I'm writing recommendations. Third of all, I'm writing papers. I'm, there, or I'm working on a couple of papers now. I was just asked to write a piece for a grant request. Uh, last week, I had to write a small project update and come up with a presentation to present to the professors for my project class. I've also had to write emails to various professors to look for summer research opportunities. In the humanities class at Caltech, uh, you're going to be writing a number of um, textual analysis pieces or uh, historical analyses. One of the major changes uh, that you'll see now that you're in college is um, 
writing research proposals. What looks like good writing in a biology class and a math class and an electrical engineering class and a history class actually has some significant differences. And that's part of what you're gonna be learning during your study here at Caltech. A great writer is able to bring their ideas to life and make people enjoy the process of reading and understanding whatever those ideas are. And in science, we have ideas that are sometimes very complicated and vocabulary that's sometimes very obscure, but a great writer brings the reader along through the difficulty of language and the difficulty of the ideas and transmits their understanding and their excitement. Really, really powerful writing is vibrant. It's creative, not in the sense of creative writing. It's not like you're writing fiction, but it's a creative use of language. And I think that you get to that place by writing more, by reading more, and by revising more. And you just want the words to pop off the page. So often one word will give you an idea of what we're talking about in a given situation better than all of the description that you can have of the details that surround the, the issue. And if you can find the right word, and it's often very hard to find the right word, uh, you can keep a reader's attention, you can get a reader surprised. I want to go back and read it again. Writing is a great source of satisfaction. To be able to craft words in a way, to play with them, to think about what you want to say in new ways, in original ways, is a kind of satisfaction that you get in few other pursuits. The ability to convince people of what you're trying to get through and the ability to explain clearly the directions you're going will allow you to have impact in the world in ways that you cannot otherwise.